Okay, I'd like to tell you about a passion of mine, which is live visual performance. I really much enjoy once you get to see a performance of visuals that is performed live for you. That can be done with dancing, but I, or anything else, but I prefer sort of generated content. Um, and where it comes from actually is also part of why I like to perform my visuals the way I do. It comes from clip-based visuals, where you can see that it started out with just triggering different video clips. Actually, it comes from a lot more, but where I began it was triggering video clips. Um, the consequence of triggering a lot of video clips is that you end up with loop-based visuals where you quite rapidly see that the clips are looping. This is actually an example of something I don't really like. Um, <clears throat> and you'll see it's quite even, it's a five second loop, so you really notice that it loops. When you're performing visuals, what you're trying to do, because usually there's uh, music along with it, you try to um, give people what some people call a synesthetic experience, which is you give senses from one sense, um, an experience, and then uh, another, you experience something in, the, in another sort of uh, sensory organ, sort of visual sort of generating or acoustic in impressions or something like that. Um, to avoid <coughs> this loopy thing, um, many people try to do generative visuals, and I like that quite a lot as well. And to make it appear and actually respond to the music, they usually make it audio reactive. Um, I actually don't really like the look of that too much. Sometimes it's brilliant, but as you can see here, it quite easily gets very jumpy. Um, and I hope you can see that. It's actually waving to my voice. Um, so what I have been looking at is that whenever you're performing visuals, there's always music along with it. So it's very sort of nearby to take a look at how do musicians perform their um, uh, art. And what's characteristic is that quite often they perform in a band or an orchestra where each musician play his or her part of a song or a track or whatever and there they actually need to listen to each other, follow the score and actually be part of each other. So they're performing with an instrument. So when I want to create an instrument I can work with doing visuals, I of course try to make what I call a visual instrument. I want to have the instrumentalism um, like musicians and I'd like to avoid loops. So when I'm doing visuals, the visuals are generated um, and you can see here this wavy thing is generated so you will, it's not a video clip running in the background and every time I start it it's actually different. So this is an example of something generative. Um, I now need to move over here because another important thing is tactile control. I need to be able to run faders and actually do real-time manipulation of what I'm doing, but not as sort of a, an, a response to audio like you saw earlier. Um, the next thing I need, and that's because I'm kind of a geek with that, to avoid it, it looking the same, is feedback. This is kind of a cheesy way of feedback that you probably know from Winamp or iTunes or something like that. But used it in the right way, it can be brilliant. And the first example of that I will show is the one that was actually also showed pictures from, which is the Killerton performance at our at, at platform four. This four. And here we actually play together was an I and I'm doing part of the image and Oz is doing another part and we have three projectors. So it's a triple projection. The next one is from Christiania, uh, the free town in Copenhagen, where I did visuals for here acoustic, basically just through a sphere and a box and had them turn around. Um, but that suited quite well with the music. And then there were um, Badu, who I sort of modified the same instrument to actually be able to make more sort of I hear randomness in their music, so I tried to do some randomness in the visuals. Um, 
This one is also another example of another instrument, also working with feedback. Um, and it's very rare you get, you get a night where you get four different performances so you can change your expression. So that's quite privileged to, to have all that. And lastly here again for real see feedback, how I use it. Um, I enjoy that sort of also using filters in the feedback system. Um, so you can see that I'm sort of having different versions of this instrument that I try to use the best for the, the uh, situation. But lately I've actually begun doing visual instruments for other people. And the first one was Max Hattler. Unfortunately I can't show you what it looks like. I call it the Hattlerizer. It's a performance tool that he needed to do. He needed a, a better performance tool for his visuals. And in April you can actually see this thing in action at the student house with Sustain. Used to be Future 3, where I did this. This is part of the video, the music video for the first track of the album. And they're also using this live, where I made an instrument for them to bring along on the road. So where to go from here, for me, that's the question. I continue to evolve my instruments. I have this sort of golden rule of whenever I do a performance, I add a new feature. Um, and when you're programming your own software, that's possible. And then I'm also working on other more intense collaboration with um, musicians. That's it, what I have to tell you, and thank you for listening.